All right. Now I'm trying to center tremolo routing. So I run the straight edge across the body, setting the my straight edge along the ebony fingerboard, drawing a line, doing the same on the opposite side, drawing a line. This will give me the centering of the bridge with the strings. Scaling on this guitar is 25 and a half. Sometimes these lines are just guidelines, and then I just accurately pinpoint the dimension. But this approximately should be the top of the saddle here. I've got a black line. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a black line right there, which is the top of the bridge saddle. So, let me create a center line down the center of the guitar. I have it on the fingerboard and I have it on the headstock. See if the headstock and the fingerboard match up. They should. And they do. All right, continuing on, let's run it through the body. It's a small line, you won't be able to see it, but it's basically a pencil line centering the fingerboard. This is approximately a width of two and a quarter. And on the nut, this particular one is 45.5 to 46 millimeter. It will change as I sand and do finishing. Here's the 12th fret location here. So we have 0, 12, and then another 12th at this point here. So continue on. Continuing on, getting a straight line down the center. I have to allow for the thickness of the pencil lead. Let me get a sharper pencil lead here. Okay, I know I've got one. There we go, that'll work. All right. So I'm allowing for the thickness of the pencil lead, and I'll roll a pencil, keeping the point from getting blunt. I roll the pencil as I make a line. So I'm setting it up. See how this straight edge flexes? This is good because it'll flatten the straight edge to the body, and I can draw my line, my center line. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's draw a center line here. And I can continue on as such. And everything should line up. There we go. Center line, done. And if I check it with the center line on the fingerboard, everything looks good. Now after I do the route, when I install the bridge, I'll have play to go back and forth and align the two outside E-strings. 
Okay, I need to get a right angle square. Moment, please. Now with this right angle square, I can approximately set the location, the bridge saddle line, or my scaling line is 25 and a half. So we just draw it like this. And that's pretty much where the saddles will go. So you can see where the route's going to go approximately. This is a, a right angle where I can actually set my scaling. Now I'm just setting the scaling. I'm not adjusting for the uh, top and bottom setup. These are all approximations as close as I can get them. See the position of that bridge, it looks pretty good. So, roughly, that's a, an approximation on the Tremolo Bridge location. Now, I'll simulate. I'm looking straight down here, so you know, I'm trying not to look at an angle this way, or I'm trying not to look at an angle this way. I come in, it looks like about an eighth of an inch for the low E. And then I run right across the, the mounting screw holes and the hole for the string, mounting screw hole and the hole for the string. And I center that, looking straight down. That looks good. Now that looks like it's going a little too far that way. So I'll just move the bridge this way to make the correction. Okay. Basically, I'm just centering, so I have strings that look, the E strings looks, look approximately like this. It's around an eighth of an inch in, give or take. That's what I'm trying to see when I look down. Down the strength of the fingerboard and looking at the edge of the fingerboard. That looks pretty good to me. So, these little tools really help. Okay, now let me. Uh, okay. I will draw the tremolo, tremolo block, 
trace around it. it it's just like I say, this is all just a ballpark, a close proximity of where this route is going to be. Now, oh yeah. <clears throat> Pull out some templates here. This is one of my handmade templates. And what I need to do is align this template and it'll fit underneath and the router pan will, you know, work along the edges of whatever routes I'm going to be using. In this case, it's basically just going to be a, a rear humbucking and a tremolo. What I'm looking for is this distance here, approximately for, for, for this particular setup. They vary, but this is about an inch and an eighth, approximately. So what I'm going to end up doing is... Uh, I'm going to end up having a line that goes all the way around the guitar, so when I turn it over, I'll be able to line up this temp template. As you can see, I have a center line. Center line, that, that's like the key to matching everything up. This one's fading on me a little bit, so let me, let me retrace that. All right, and my template. All I'm doing is darkening up that center line. I've used these templates quite a bit, so everything's fading. All my markings are fading. I'm all, on this template here, it's I'm only concerned with the tremolo route and the humbucking. I'm not concerned about anything else. Center line is important too. And then the location of this template, whether it be this way or this way, is important. I need to have this underneath. That way I'll route on top, here and here. So I'm trying to... This is an actual block location. So typically, the front end of the route is going to be close to this front of the block. So what I'm trying to do now is establish this line here. I want to make sure that there's going to be uh, ample room for this block. As you can see also, this is a tapered block. Some of the bridges are that way. Some are a certain width here. Like if it's a, a solid block, it's just straight up. So whatever this width is down here, it's going to be the same right here at the very end of the bridge, bridge block. So if we line up our center line, Give me about a 30, 30 second of an inch gap in here. That should work. 
I can see that the block that I drew is pretty centered in this route, which is good. So the drawing that I made on the body, it's approximately like there, that's flush, and I move it back like a 32nd of an inch or maybe a little more. Just so I don't have friction up here. Gotta remember there's probably many, many different ways of installing templates for routing for tremolos. This is just a I kind of use a method of whatever works. I, I really, uh, it's really basic. So, even though there's a slight taper here, when I drew with a pencil, the pencil kind of extends out a little bit all the way around the perimeter, so it's actually a wider drawing which will make it line up here. So I just want to make sure that I set this template so I have plenty of room so it doesn't bind up here once the block is put in. And that looks pretty good right there. Probably even uh, I'd say a good sixteenth of an inch gap, and then what I'll do is make a few little line marks here. I'll, you'll see them in a moment, and you'll see how I'll line this up on the back side. And this will already be set the humbucker. So there's a mark there. There's a mark here. It's about a sixteenth of an inch. Trust me, good straight edges like this, and like this. You need a good angle, right angle square. And here's a flat one. Very good to use. I have some larger one, larger right angles that I use. Like this. These are all good measuring devices to have, as well as a string, good pencil, uh, type of bridge you're going to be routing for, and uh, maybe a few more elements, but that's basically a good start. As we move on, I'll probably bring out other tools. I know this looks a little scattered, but... My apologies if that's not your way. Everybody has a different way of doing things, and this is mine, so it works for me. That's all she wrote. You have a better way, another way, that's fine. This will get the job done. So I'm going to run a straight line, but I need to make it right angle so we're square. Okay, there's our line that we need to line up right out of this tremolo wrap. And I'll show you in a second here. Keep in mind, always allow for the thickness of the pencil. See, this pencil is starting to wear out. There we go. I try to remember to rotate the pencil. By rotating the pencil, you're always keeping the point at a, a very good tapered pinnacle. So now, this is where this little tool comes in handy. 
what I'm going to do mark that line that I just drew you got to be careful to keep this flat to the face of the body Okay, allow for the thickness of the pencil lead. I don't know if you can, you probably can't see it, but I, I see a little gap between the, the line drawing and the edge. Because of this pencil lead, the thickness of it. Okay. We'll come over and do this side the same way. Keeping your lines as accurate as possible. All these little tolerances make a difference towards the end result. Rock and roll. So we make a little line here. a little line here. I guess you can see where I'm going with this. With our straight edge. Allowing for the thickness of the pencil lead mark. Rotate your pencil. See how I'm rotating it? It keeps the tip round and pointed. There's our mark. It's all the way around. It goes all the way around like this. And it matches my mark here. It works. <clears throat> One thing about tolerance is if you if you draw a line and you have it off a little bit, okay. But then you draw another line, like let's say this was my first line, second line, third line. If you're off a little bit, all of a sudden, from your first dimension and line that you put, you could end up in increments increasing the tolerance off of what you want. So your first line is set and the second one is a little off. The third one is a little off, and if there's a fourth line, before you know it, your last line would be way off, and that could be a problem. So always be as accurate as you possibly can be in matching lines like I just did from front side to back. Okay. So what's missing here? Well, we've got a center line that's missing. Well, how am I going to get that centered? Let's deal with that. Well, it's pretty easy. Using a block in the end, I just, all you need is two marks. You can actually take them anywhere. Let's, let's take it from here. And you're pretty much going to have to scrap a line on this. And I'm trying to keep it at a 90 as much as possible, but I have five and a half here. So Let's make a mark here, and let's go to uh, two and seven eight. So let's make a mark here. Uh, 
Okay. All right, so let's do a... Uh, let's do a mark here. And let's do a mark here. If I use the long part, that's not going to work. So that's why I'm using a shorter length here. To me, a lot of this has just been common sense, basic, very basic, basic working, measuring. <clears throat> but. Uh, the end result is good. I, I end up with really nice instruments. As you all know, that have been used by recording artists that have made some terrific, magnificent recordings. Don't want to do any name dropping you. If you've done research on me, you pretty much know who I've done work for. Okay, same thing. I'm just trying to keep everything accurate as possible. You'll see my reasoning here in a minute. This, that way you can see what I'm doing. Rotate the pencil, rotate the pencil, rotate the pencil. Cool. All right. Put a mark here. Just like this center line that I did. I can see that they're identical to the marks that I've made on the side. You're going to see how this works out here. You know, I have no guidelines to put a straight edge. I can't go by these because they might be off a little bit, but keeping this centered, the center line is very, very crucial. Like I say, as accurate as you can make it, the better, better off you'll be in the end. Okay, those matched up. Maybe some of you can see where I'm going with this. If you can, if you're ahead of the game, cool. But all I've done here was create 90 degree lines. Basics, basis. 